too. It's not that makeup makes you look worse. It's just the makeup has to work for you. Hi all, welcome to Go Go Lay Go. I'm Layla, um, and um, sure, most of your favorite celebrities and influencers are born with beautiful features and have access to a team of stylists whose literal jobs are to be fairy godmothers who transform them into Cinderella. <laughs> But shocker, makeup doesn't always look good on them either. And here's proof. No hate, just not the best makeup job I've seen on them. You might be wondering, who are you to tell me about makeup anyway? What's your qualifications? The answer is, I have none. But as someone who also struggled with makeup when I was younger, and here's proof again, Shut up, I was 16. It took me years to learn how to do my own makeup that bring out my own unique features. Today I'm gonna save you some trial and errors and show you the three makeup tips that makes the biggest difference that I learned over the years so that you can apply to your own use cases and dramatically enhance your own features without lip injection, rhinoplasty, um, eye lift surgeries, or filters. We're gonna be talking about foundation, contouring, and eye makeup. Let's go. The thing you need to understand about foundation is that its sole purpose is to create a clean canvas so that other beautiful colors such as your eyeshadow, blush, or lipstick can be applied to your face later. The whole entire point is to make it seem like you're not wearing any foundation. Choosing a color that matches your skin tone is the key. This is something I observed from living in both Asia and America for a long time. Most Asian girls go for lighter tone foundations, whereas American girls go for tanner tones. I could literally write a whole essay explaining why that is, but I won't bore you with it. Whichever aesthetic that you lean towards, I would strongly advise against using a color that's too light or too tan for your true skin tone. So if anyone ever compliments you on your foundation, you know you're doing something wrong because they're not supposed to see it. <laughs> In this footage, I'm wearing a foundation that's a couple shades lighter than my true skin tone and it just looks like I dipped my face in cake mix or something. It also gets progressively worse throughout the day because it will inevitably crease and form dry patches and it's super visible because the color contrasts literally make it look like dandruff on dark hair. It can look a little bit unnatural without ugh, studio lighting. And trust me when I say this, YouTube, YouTube makeup, makeup tutorials are made for YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> it's exaggerated and heavy-handed because making something look good on camera is a completely different thing from making something look good in real life. Try it on before you purchase. Leave it on for a couple minutes because the color can change due to oxidation. And if the color blends well or straight up disappear into your own skin, that's the color you want to get. Secondly, remember foundation have different textures. Choose one that suits your own skin type. Okay, let's move on to contouring. I know a lot of y'all likes to use heavy contour to slim down your face like but where you apply contour can literally change the shape of your face. It's like photoshopping in real life. Let's take a look at cheek contour as an example. So on the left, we have this high fashion Bella Hadid contouring technique where the contour is just located beneath my cheekbone. Versus on the right, the contour is used to tone down my cheekbone and smooth out the sharp angles on my face to achieve that girl next door look. So you might prefer one over the other, but I personally alternate between the two depending on my hairstyle and my outfit. Um, so for example, I usually go for the um, smoother contouring technique during the daytime and a high fashion look if I'm going out or like doing a full glam up for something. Another example of contouring is your nose. For example, on the left, I'm contouring my nose with straight lines versus on the right, I'm breaking it into three parts. I think it's pretty obvious that the picture on the left make my nose look longer, right? So how do you know which one suits you better? So general rule of thumb is that if you have 
rounder and shorter faces go with a straight line but if you have long faces with a lot of like straight line and sharp angles you would break it up into three parts so that it doesn't look like you're elongating this part even more last but not least eye makeup guys i know celebrities these days go out of their ways to get eye lift surgeries done and believe it or not how you do your eye makeup can dramatically change your eye shape without surgery so you can have fun while it's trendy and um, change it up when it goes out of fashion Again, let's take a look at this example. Uh, so on the left, we have the trendy eye lip makeup look versus on the right, the focus is mostly on the lower half of my eyes. So how to tell which eye makeup suits you the best? Draw a line from the top of your head to the bottom of your chin. Then draw a horizontal line. Now, where do your eyes sit in relation to the horizontal line? If they're lower, then yes, upper eye makeup can make the distribution of your face appear less crowded and more balanced. If they're higher, it's probably better if you focus on lower eye makeup, which will bring them down a bit visually. For example, in my case, the makeup on the left make my face look kind of unbalanced. And that's because the position of my eyes are already pretty high. All right, that concludes the video. Please, please, please hit the like button or a comment below and let me know whether you find this video helpful or not. In my last video, I talked about how to make long faces look shorter with makeup and I didn't expect anyone would watch it because my channel was so new. But some of you nonetheless left a comment and let me know that it was helpful. So that really made me happy. Aww. If you want to see more of this type of content, please subscribe. It will motivate me not to let this channel die. And God, I'm so nervous and self-conscious when I'm making videos in English because it's obviously not my native language. Um, but we're working on it. We're working on it, okay? Enough of this rambling. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye!